Hello and welcome to Aging Well, a monthly production by Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Uh, with me today is my fabulous guest, <laughs> Marie Mazel. Thank you for having me on, Nathan. Oh, it's great to have you here. We're going to talk about volunteer programs at SCCS. Yeah. You guys do a lot of amazing work, and I'm really eager to jump in and just uh, share all of this information with our, our listeners mm -hmm. and, and viewers about what you guys do. Yeah, I'm really proud of all of the volunteer programs that we have. Um, it's exciting. I think we, we offer a lot to the community that, that services so many of our aging in place clients. And um, we, we have volunteer programs that have always been a part of the agency. And since I've come on, we've added a lot of new ones. Um, always there was our new friend program where volunteers go and visit once a week with lonely, isolated um, clients. Um, there was the escort, medical escort program where uh, clients need some assistance going to and from medical appointments or some place that they need to get to that they need a little bit of an aid. Mm -hmm. And um, the ombudsman program where volunteers are going into the nursing homes, making sure that everybody is happy and being treated with dignity and respect. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, then we, you know, there were always one day opportunities where I know we'll, we'll talk about them later on. Mm. Um, and then we brought in some, you know, other programs. Money management has always been there. It's a great program, mm. um, assisting clients with uh, managing their finances. Mm. And um, then we added in the um, Caring Neighbors program, mm. where we could help random volunteer vo clients that would call in. Uh, maybe they're sick and they needed somebody to go pick up a prescription, mm. pick up some groceries because they weren't feeling well. And, and then we blossomed it that, you know, we, we actually match some volunteers because some volunteers have busy schedules and they still want to give back to helping others, mm -hmm. but they don't have that weekly commitment that they can give. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we matched them maybe once or twice a month, assisting some of the clients with once a month needs. Mm -hmm. And also there are some clients that are just so extremely lonely mm -hmm. that even giving them a new friend volunteer, sometimes having that other little aid once mm -hmm. or twice a month is, is another plus. Mm -hmm. um, we eventually added in our medical advocate program, um, another exciting program and um, you know, John Dooley came on as a volunteer, and John Dooley and I put this program together, mm -hmm. um, and it's now been running for over five years now, mm -hmm. and it actually assists clients not only going to and from the medical appointments, but empowering them with their medical appointments, making sure that they're comfortable talking to their doctor about what their needs are, making mm. sure that they really understand what the doctor is saying to them. Mm. Um, these volunteers will meet with them and, um, and know ahead of time what the client's needs are. Uh, mm. Today, it's just so um, easy for clients to get confused with all of the medications that they're taking. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, having a volunteer to really help with this was a great addition with our medical advocate program. Mm -hmm. Then we brought in the Senior Pet Program, mm -hmm. um, and that program helped our seniors, and again, all of our programs really benefit those low-income seniors, mm -hmm. and the Senior Pet Program really helped with that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, even clients that are getting Meals on Wheels, are sh we're sharing their meals with their pets because mm -hmm. they just didn't have the money mm -hmm. um, to buy food for their pets. So we assist them, you know, we get donations. Target in Somerville has been great with donating to us, um, mm -hmm. give us litter and um, food that we're able to help some of these clients mm -hmm. um, have extra money at the end of the month to be using on their own food and prescriptions. Mm -hmm. And um, we also found a vet, um, Pet Haven in Watertown and the Revere Pet Clinic that has um, clinics in Medford and Charlestown that are giving us low cost veterinary care mm. um, so that we're actually able to provide some uh, low cost medical care mm. um, for the clients. And we do some fundraising for some of those expensive ones. 
Um, for the pets. For pets, yes. And, and then we added on our spiritual caregiver program mm -hmm. where um, volunteers go in. There's, it's a very intense program, 50 hours worth of training. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see the commitment with the volunteers that we bring into some of Cambridge Elder Services. And, you know, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with um, religion. Everything is interfaith. There's so many different faiths that make up that program. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's really just amazing to see the work that these volunteers do going into the homes and just bringing that spiritual comfort that clients need with getting old, um, loss of loved ones, mm. coming close to the end of, of their own lives. Mm. So uh, it, you can see we, we really just, just have a bundle of the, great the, programs. It's an, it's an impressive roster and uh, you're very enthusiastic about uh, the services that we provide. So if people hear about these programs, uh, how do people go about enrolling? If they hear about one of the programs and they're like, wow, I think that could really help me. Well, a lot of our referrals will come because obviously we have case managers and staff that are out visiting clients. Mm -hmm. And if they see some sort of a need, um, they'll come back and, and make referrals for some of the volunteer programs so that they're, you know, these clients can get something extra mm -hmm. if they need that. Um, sometimes some clients may not qualify for some services, but they can get assistance through our volunteer programs. So those are referrals that will come in-house mm -hmm. um, to the different managers of the volunteer programs or myself. And um, we'll also get outside referrals so that sometimes um, different agencies might contact us or contact our age information center to find something out in. Um, a call will get sent down to me to connect with somebody mm -hmm. about becoming um, a client. Mm -hmm. And again, just like programs like this, Nathan, somebody hears about it or um, they, are, they participate at an event that some of Cambridge Elder Services participates and promotes in the different um, cities of Somerville and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And clients themselves will call up and see if they can get some help. Sometimes they'll see something in the newspaper and they'll make a phone call to see, hey, can I, can I get some help from this program? Oh, that's great. Yeah. And now I know we have confidentiality restrictions, but can you, you tell me a little bit about um, a, a incident where, where these programs were able to make a difference and people were able to benefit? Oh, from absolutely. Um, you know, I, I can go way back to when I first started, um, you know, in the, in the volunteer programs, and I personally manage the um, new friend program, the caring neighbor program, and the senior pet program. Um, and I remember meeting um, this elder gentleman, um, extremely intelligent, um, World War II veteran, and um, so emotional meeting him. When I used to call him, he would, he was so lonely and isolated, um, he would just cry. Um, he, when I visited him, um, he would just cry recollecting about the war and, um, I, I got a new friend in there and I, I, I would be sitting there talking to him with tears in my eyes. It was just so heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. And, um, I ended up introducing him to a volunteer who again got, saw how lonely and devastated he was, you know, just talking about these terrible things that happened in his life just always brought tears. Um, so he was another client that I felt needed some extra support and I put um, a caring neighbor in there and um, his transformation was incredible. Mm -hmm. It was, I, I would, I went from calling to see how he was doing and how the volunteers visits were going with him and he'd be crying to this man that was you know so happy to hear me I have a joke to tell you Marie and um, so inspirational everything this intelligent man had to give to these volunteers mm -hmm. um, the vo one volunteer that was his new friend moved out of the country and when she'd come back to visit um, in the US 
she would call him and visit she got married she had a child and she would visit this client because he had such an impact on her life as well as the impact and the volunteers never realize the impact they have mm -hmm. on the these clients lives mm -hmm. and the caring neighbor volunteer would go there and um, she what she was guided so much she was just so supportive of this this client mm -hmm. and um, he helped her direct her give her advice for going back to grad school so this this was just one situation of um, such a happy ending mm -hmm. and the volunteers you know they would say oh you know he he told me to tell you thank you for giving back his life and I'd say to the volunteers I didn't give him back his life you you're you guys gave him back his life you're the one that's visiting you made him feel alive again mm -hmm. you you touched all of the intelligence that was still left in his his brain to talk to you he he gave them guidance like they were his own children it was mm -hmm. yeah there's there's just so many this is just one heartwarming story mm -hmm. and it's it's win-win for both volunteers and the clients and that's what's just so inspirational for me mm -hmm. working in this department it's definitely it sounds like it's a it's a two-way exchange yeah and uh definitely made a difference uh, for both parties which is great absolutely I mean you after a while it's you know I've seen clients that you know I met them maybe they weren't getting their hair done you know wearing ripped up shoes and meeting them on the street and having to take a, a second look um, to say hello um, because their their hair was done they weren't as disheveled it was like having a volunteer in their life making them feel good about themselves and and reasons to get out there and why it is important um, to feel good just because you're maybe living on a fixed income um, there's there's a lot out there to give many of the clients that need this hope that hope mm -hmm. um, encouragement you know that there are other. people yeah you know so many people you know we're we're living in a different world today even if people have family members they're working busy um, mm -hmm. you know older adults are living longer so you've got people taking care of children their own parents both both um, people in a home working full-time jobs sometimes full-time jobs and a part-time job mm. it really it's it's a struggle on families so um, it's sometimes just even having a volunteer in there is is extra support to a whole family I have some volunteers that are actually invited to every um, function that goes on in a family so mm. it's you know for some of those volunteers that have moved away from home and settled in um, Somerville in Cambridge they now have extended families because of not only the client mm. developing that relationship with the um, volunteer but the whole family embraces this volunteer who has how this complete stranger can bring so much mm -hmm. life to a loved one and to a whole family mm -hmm. is is inspirational. Oh, that's really great. That's, uh, that's what mm -hmm. it's all about. Yeah. I think we'll, um, with that, we'll wrap up uh, this first segment, take a break, and we'll be right back. Great. And welcome back to Aging Well. I'm Nathan Lamb, and with me today is my guest, Marie Mazel. Thank you for having me, Nathan. Happy to talk about what we have going on. Oh, it's great to have you here. In this segment, I was hoping to talk about ways people can get involved with SECS volunteerism. Mm -hmm. And I guess a good place to start there would be talking about which volunteer programs uh, could use help at this point in time. Absolutely. And um, one quick note, too, is that we have some one-day opportunities. Mm -hmm. And one of those one-day opportunities is Brown Bag. It's every second Tuesday of the month. Mm -hmm. It's at the Arts for the Armory Building, 191 Highland Avenue. And um, difficult to get volunteers sometimes, so we try to get corporate companies to come on board because it's during the daytime hours. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's from 8 till about 11. And a lot of our older adults are volunteers, 
and that's one program that wouldn't exist without volunteers helping. And um, people that qualify get a once a month a bag of groceries. Mm. We have our other one day opportunity coming up, um, Thanksgiving Meals on Wheels delivery. Mm. It's the only day Meals on Wheels drivers have the day off. Mm. And volunteers come in on Thanksgiving morning. Mm -hmm. And teams of two go out and deliver um, hot meals to clients that have no place to go or are bedridden and, and mm -hmm. can't go out. And we're happy to say that not only do the clients get a meal, but their pets get meals as well. Even if they have fish and a bird, we don't discriminate against what somebody considers a pet. Mm -hmm. um, we do a holiday bagging in December. Mm -hmm. um, this goes out to some of our more isolated Meals on Wheels clients that can't get out mm -hmm. so that the Meals on Wheels drivers are dropping off a bag of of holiday cheer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have office volunteers too that come in um, during the weeks and help with um, things that need to get done, mailings. Um, so there's, there's a lot of ways to get involved. Um, some of our programs that are in, in desperate need are, again, our escort program and medical escort, mm -hmm. because most of our clients that need to go to the doctors need to go to the doctors during the week. Mm -hmm. So you figure, you know, again, as we're living longer, most people are working longer. We're, we have a lot of energy and desire to stay working. Mm -hmm. So people are retiring much later. Mm -hmm. So we don't have as many people available during the daytime mm -hmm. um, to be able to help some of the clients go to and from medical appointments. Mm -hmm. We're lucky sometimes some people will hear about the, this program and maybe they have flexible working schedules and, and they're willing to give some time one day a week um, to helping in this program. I just interviewed somebody that said in October their work schedule is, is changing and they're going to have Fridays off. Mm -hmm. and we're so desperate for volunteers in that program that we are definitely taking her on just to help us get clients to and from medical appointments on, um, fr on Fridays. Mm -hmm. um, our medical advocate program, it's a wonderful program. If there's anybody that you know out there that could use a volunteer mm -hmm. um, helping uh, this older adult navigate with medication and at doctor's appointments, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we get nervous when we're going to the doctors, especially if we're not feeling good. Mm -hmm. So picture um, people that have ongoing illnesses, it's, it, mm -hmm. it gets overwhelming. We mm -hmm. don't want them to give up. Mm -hmm. on feeling that they can't get better. Mm -hmm. We want them to really feel and, and go in there and talk to their doctor and, you know, get recommendations for other types of medications that could benefit or therapies that might make them feel better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and volunteers that have that compassion mm -hmm. to empower clients um, in their medical appointments is, is another need. Mm -hmm. um, money management, we can always use money management volunteers. There's bill payers, rep payees, and um, learning more about that program is, is just a phone call away mm -hmm. um, to, to get on board there. And the rep payee, that's when the person actually needs to have somebody pay bills on yes, their behalf. Because, uh, yes, because maybe somebody is being financially exploited, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that that checkbook isn't in their hands so that people, you know, again, um, as we get older, we become more vulnerable mm -hmm. to being financially exploited. And mm -hmm. sadly, many family members and close friends are the ones that are doing it. Mm -hmm. You have somebody that's visioned impaired and somebody writes out a check and they're bouncing their checking account because mm -hmm. instead of making the check out for $30, somebody made the check out for $60 and the person signs it because they didn't, they didn't see that mm. the amount was wrong. Mm -hmm. So this is when we will um, put a representative payee in there. And, mm -hmm. and another reason why we'll have bill payers is maybe, you know, I laugh, I have a little tremor to my hand. Mm -hmm. And I know as I'm going to get older, it's going to get worse. So having somebody that can write those checks out mm -hmm. and the person being able to sign it um, is, is a big assistance, mm -hmm. big assistance. And remember, our goal is to keep clients at home um, living the lifestyle they want with dignity. Absolutely. Which which brings me into why the senior pet program is so important, because unless somebody 
doesn't realize, unless you're an animal lover yourself, a lot mm. of people don't realize the relationship between people and animals. Mm. For many clients that have lost loved ones, that suffer depression or loneliness, mm. um, their lives are so benefited by an animal. Um, it's the reason to get up in the morning. If they go into the hospital, it's a reason to come home from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Many won't go to the hospital because they won't leave their pet mm -hmm. if somebody isn't going to be able to take care of it and it's going to be there when they come home from rehab or a hospital stay. You, you're, you're alluding to a lot of challenges of pet ownership. Mm -hmm. These are things that Senior Pet does help people with. Absolutely. We have a client that's bedridden and of course family's members say um, she can't have she can't have a pet. She can't have, after her cat died, she can't have another cat. And it, it's not about what everybody else feels. It's I asked the client, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And she wanted another pet. She's bedridden. That cat would jump up on her bed and she could pet it mm -hmm. and and talk to it. And we put volunteers in there that are that go in there twice a week mm -hmm. and make sure that everything is all set with the with the pet, you know, her being able to have it. There's so many techniques today mm -hmm. that enable somebody um, to take care of their pets. Longer scooping, mm -hmm. um, you know, even even clients with, with dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on a situation right now where people feel this client, um, they want to renege on his rights to have a big dog. Mm -hmm. And um, this, this dog is a support dog to him. And, um, you know, right now I've got volunteers going in there and getting the dog out for more exercise. We can actually train the dog to walk a treadmill mm. if they think the client can't get the dog having that much exercise. Um, but, you know, and then the next thing is, well, we don't think the client can handle this dog. And, you know, what it just was was the wrong collar. Mm -hmm. Put the dog in dog training, sent the client to the dog training to show him how to use a new collar, and he has great control with, with this dog. So the program, I think, has gotten bigger and beyond what anybody at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services even thought it would touch upon. Mm -hmm. it's, it really is a strong advocate to those clients that need somebody that truly understands the relationship between animals mm -hmm. and people. And people can support it through both donations and through volunteers. Absolutely. Um, you know, monetary, monetary donations are always welcomed. It helps with those um, special things that um, need to be audited through prescriptions. Um, but dropping off, um, you know, dried food, especially wet canned food, we, we don't get a lot of donations of wet cat food mm. um, and there's a lot of need because as as animals as cats age they sometimes have difficulty eating the dry food so mm. we're trying to get the word out there that we could use more donations of, of mm. wet food for cats mm. um, we'll be getting ready for our Thanksgiving um, and we will will deliver food so mm. no matter what pet they have we'll go out and and purchase um, food for for these pets as well so monetary monetary donations will help our, our Thanksgiving program mm. purchase the the food that that we need um, sometimes we run out of litter mm. um, so having um, litter if anybody wants to drop off litter to the agency they can do that as as mm. well and the volunteerism these are things like um, if somebody's worried about who will take care of their pet while they're in the hospital, yeah, um, that's something, are those the sort of things like that yes. temporary foster care? Yes, well we had a client that became terminally ill and once again heart wrenching mm -hmm. what's going to happen to my cat, you know, I mean some are still young but some are older and people mm -hmm. don't want them to um, see that beloved pet get put down because it's too old if it ends up in mm -hmm. um, a take-all um, place that can't that can't find um, a foster home mm. for um, a, an older pet. And we recently had a client that passed away, and one of our our staff took the the cat. Um, Susie, the cat was about, is about 13, 14 years old, mm. and when we confirmed that we had somebody that was going to take Susie. 
um, and I was going to work out details. The client had gone into hospice, mm. and shortly after I made the phone call to the caregiver that I was going to come and pick Susie up, mm -hmm. the client passed away, almost like he knew his cat was safe. Mm -hmm. And um, the you know it's it's incredible, and we have Patrice now um, that is going to go up on our Somerville Cambridge Elder Service Facebook, and um, uh, Kitty Connection is going to network with um, finding Patrice a home because her client went into hospice, mm -hmm. and um, she didn't know that Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Um, would take her pet. She was part of the pet program and I, I told her, don't you worry, you know, you're part of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services and Patrice is a client of Somerville Cambridge mm -hmm. Elder Services too. So we're not going to let anything happen um, to Patrice. And one of our volunteers came forward, met me at the client, took Patrice and is fostering Patrice now until we can get him a home. It is a him. That is that is great. You are passionate about pets. Yeah, as passionate something. about our clients and the pets. Absolutely. Um, so I guess one more question before we wrap it up. Um, what do you look for in volunteers? It sounds like your volunteers do a lot of great work. What are some of the things you're looking for uh, when people come forward and want yeah, to be volunteers? I, I, I think what really inspires me and motivates me is the compassion and dedication of our volunteers. Um, I've been, I'll be working at some of o Cambridge Elder Services for 12 years and some of the mass matches that I have done mm -hmm. um, go from when I've taken over the new friend program. Uh, our volunteers are so committed, compassion, understanding, good listening skills mm -hmm. are some of the most important um, qualities that somebody can have in, have in, in volunteering. Um, and dedicated and committed. Most of our programs, we look for somebody that can stay for a year, mm. um, but some programs will take somebody short term just to be able to get that support um, that's needed. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, volunteers can find out what program is a good fit for them. Absolutely. And there's also one day if they want something with a little less of a long-term commitment. Absolutely. There's, there's volunteering once a month. And even if that once a month time is after working hours or on a weekend, mm -hmm. you know, um, we definitely have something for you to do. And I always say that um, 30 minutes is life-changing in some of our clients' lives. Mm -hmm. And I, most volunteers, once they start volunteering, mm -hmm. um, it really is ever once a month. Mm -hmm. And I have volunteers that move out of the state and still keep in touch with the client. I have a client, I have a volunteer that moved to Arizona and still does telephone support through the Caring Neighbors program with, uh, with one of our clients. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And if people want to learn more about specific programs getting involved, we have a page on the website mm -hmm. that yes. lists. Yes, we have. If you go to our website, www.eldercare.org, and you click on volunteers, all of the forms that you need to fill out are online. Mm. Um, they get sent right into the volunteer programs and um, process those applications. We need to have a government photo ID. Um, all of our programs, our volunteers are Corey cleared, mm -hmm. so definitely that's something that needs to be done. And we mm -hmm. do do registry of motor vehicle checks. If mm -hmm. somebody doesn't have a good driving record, they can't put any of our um, clients in a vehicle. And one other thing that I forgot to say about our escort program, the medical escort program, is that you don't need to have a car. Okay, so having a car is a plus, but you don't need to have a car either. We can, uh, with our clients, we do provide transportation. Definitely good to know. Yes. On that note, I think we're going to wrap it up. You've been a fabulous guest today. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Aging Well. Thanks again for joining us today. Uh, we'll be back soon with another episode of Aging Well. Uh, till then, take care. Thanks again. <laughs>